Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Simplifying Logarithms. This is part one of several. Up until this point, we have covered the concept of the exponential function. You should have already watched the lesson on what an exponential function is. It's a number raised to a power of a variable, such as like, for instance, two to the x, three to the x, those are exponential functions. We've also covered in great detail the concept of a logarithm. The logarithm is the inverse function of the exponential function. So you also should have learned in the past lessons on what an inverse function is. So logarithm and exponential function go together like peanut butter and jelly. They're inverses of one another. So there's two things I want you to remember in the back of your mind as we go and we start simplifying logarithms and really applying the definition of the logarithm. The first thing is I want you to always remember that a logarithm is the inverse function. It's kind of the opposite function of an exponential. And likewise, the exponential is an opposite function of a logarithm. So later on down the road, we're gonna use exponentials and logarithms to undo each other. We're gonna use them to solve equations because we can undo those, uh, those functions with the inverse function, right? And the second thing is I want you to understand that a logarithm, when you calculate what it's doing, it's giving you back an exponent. We talked about that in the last lesson when we introduced logarithms. When you calculate logarithm of 10, uh, or logarithm base two of 15, or logarithm base five of nine, or whatever, the calculation you get back is it's returning the exponent back, the exponent required to calculate that number that you're taking the logarithm of. So here we go, simplifying some logs. I want you to remember both of those things, which we've covered in the past, so here's our first uh, little problem. Logarithm base five of 125. Now all of these logarithm problems are gonna have a base involved. Just like all exponentials, they have to have a base to define the exponential. Two to the power of x, 10 to the power of x, five to the power of x, those numbers are the bases of the exponential. And because a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential, logarithms have a base as well. The base here is five. Now what you need to do to translate this, to solve this, to simplify this, is you need to translate it as follows. The base, which is five, raised to the power of something, which is what this whole thing is gonna to equal to, I'm gonna call it x, is gonna be equal to 125. This is gonna be how we solve every one of these logarithm problems. When you see a logarithm, what it's telling you is there's some exponent that is gonna end up being this value of x that's gonna be such that five, the base, raised to that exponent, gives you what you're taking the logarithm of. So that's why I'm telling you logarithms give you back, they calculate for you the exponent required to do that. Remember that, logarithms give you the exponent back. The exponent here we're calling x. So how do we calculate what x is equal to? Well, you can do it a couple of different ways, but let's write it like this. On the right hand side, we know that 125 can be written as five to the power of three. Five times five is 25. 25 times, again, five is 125. Now we have the base is the same on the both sides of the equal sign. So the exponents then must be equal. X must be equal to three. And so for your final answer, what I want you to write down is the following thing. I want you to say logarithm base five of the number 125 is equal to three. This is what you would circle on your test. If I say simplify this, what I wanna know is what is it equal to? What is it equal to? If you dump it in a calculator or a computer, what do you get? But more intuitively than that, I want you to remember the logarithm gives me the exponent back. In this case, it's giving me that exponent back of a three, telling me that if I take this base to raise to this exponent, I'm gonna get back whatever I'm calculating the logarithm of because the logarithm gives me the exponent back. I've said that about 10 times, I'll stop saying it. I want you to remember it because a lot of times students kind of forget what logarithms are. After you start using them for a while, you kind of forget what you're doing after a while once you get a little more comfortable, but as you get deeper in math, you're going to need to remember what exactly they're doing. All right, next problem. What if I have logarithm base three of the number 81? Again, I'm gonna calculate this. It's going to give me the exponent back. What exponent? I take three to whatever exponent this log is gonna calculate has gotta be equal to the number I'm taking the logarithm of. It's returning the exponent back. Now, what exponent makes this work? The easiest thing to do is try to get the right-hand side and put it in terms of the same base. But you know that nine times nine is 81, so I can write that as nine squared. And then you remember that nine can be written as three squared, squared, right? So this is nine squared. And because I have an exponent raised to an exponent, I can write this 
as three to the fourth power. Now, if you just happen to know that three to the fourth power is 81, then you could skip all this stuff here. But most of us don't remember that three to the fourth power is 81. So you go step by step. You say, well, nine times nine is 81. Oh, I can write nine is three times three. So now I have the same base. And because I have the same base, I now know that then X must be equal to four. Now, generally, there's no X in this problem anywhere. So what I really want you to write down is the following logarithm base three of 81 is equal to four. Four is the exponent returned by the logarithm function such that the base raised to this exponent is equal to what I'm taking the logarithm of. All right, let's go off to a much, much easier problem. Let's go logarithm base three of the number one. How do you calculate this? Anytime you see these things, you're gonna do it the same way. You're gonna translate this and say, three raised to the power of something, which is what this log is gonna calculate, is gonna be equal to whatever I'm taking the log of. And you might say, well, in this problem, I could get the basis to be the same, so I can find the exponent. I could get the basis to look the same, so I can find this exponent here. But here, there's no way that I can get these bases the same. But then you start thinking about it further, and you say, well, wait a minute, though. Three to the power of something is one. Uh, anything to the zero power is equal to one. So if I put a zero here, three to the zero is one. It's something you're gonna to have to remember. When an exponent is a zero, then it always evaluates and calculates to be the number one. So log, base three log of the number one is equal to zero. And that's the final answer there. In fact, uh, log of any base uh, of the number one, uh, base, whatever base, whatever base you have, logarithm of the number one is always gonna be zero. If this were a base 10, um, then 10 to the power of something is one. Okay, the X is still zero. If it was base 17, 17 to the power of something is one. Some, the exponent is always zero. So logarithm, no matter what base you have, of the number one always gets you zero. That's something you might want to remember, but if you forget it, you just calculate it again, you know, when you need to. All right. Now, for some reason, fractions really trip up students. So let's do one with a fraction. Logarithm base five of the number one over 25. So probably a better way to write it is to wrap this in parentheses to tell you it's a base five logarithm of the number, which is a fraction one over 25. Some people just get very confused by that. You cannot let fractions trip you up. It's the same thing. This logarithm is gonna spit back an exponent to you. It's five raised to that exponent is gonna be equal to this number here, one over 25. So you have to figure out what exponent does this. So you really wanna to try to get them into the B of the same base. So five to the power of X, you can write this as one over five squared. That's pretty close because you have a five there, but this fraction makes it not quite right. So how do you handle that? And then you remember, oh, wait a minute. I can write this one over five squared as five to the negative two power. Now I have everything in the same form as before. Base is the same on both sides. So then I can equate the exponents. X is negative two. But again, there's no X in this problem. So what I want you to really do is say the logarithm base five of the number one over 25 is equal to negative two. That is the simplification here. So it's returning an exponent back. The reason it's a negative logarithm is because five raised to the negative two will be one over five squared, which is exactly what you have here. So if you thought about it long enough, you probably could just figure out what the exponent was by thinking you know, and, and kind of staring at it. But the problem is when the problems get more complicated, staring at the problem without doing anything is really dangerous because maybe you don't, you never figure out what to do. So you have to try to get these bases the same. That's the proper way to go. All right, so what if we have not just a fraction or a number, but what if we have a radical in there? Logarithm, base six, of the number six times the square root of six. Now, this six times the square root of six is, is what the logarithm is is working on. So it's this whole number here. How do you proceed? Same exact thing. Six, the base here, to the power of some exponent, what the logarithm is going to give me back, is equal to this number here. Six, square root of six. Now this is where most students will just stop. They don't know what to do. You understand it when you have numbers. You can understand it when you have fractions. You start throwing radicals in there, they freeze. They don't know what to do. It's because in algebra you have to use what you already know you know that this radical can be written as an exponent. So you have to write it as an exponent. Six multiplied by, what would this be? Six to the power of one half. That is what this radical is equal to, the square root. Then you have the same base here and they're multiplied. So this is six to the power of one and this is six to the power of one half. So just like X 
times x squared, you can add those exponents to give you x cubed. Here the bases are the same, so I can add these exponents. So what I'm going to have is 1 plus a half. Now you may not remember what that is, I remember what it is, but a lot of people don't. So if you have to add the number 1 plus 1 half, you would write this as 2 over 2 to get a common denominator. And so what you're going to get is 3 halves. So when you add 1 plus a half, you get 3 halves. So 6 to the power of x is 6 to the power of 3 halves, adding these exponents together. So you see you have it now where the bases are the same. x then be, has to be equal to 3 halves. Again, there's no x in this problem. I kind of use that to, to figure out the answer. So really what you want to do is you want to say the logarithm, base 6 logarithm of 6 times the square root of 6 is equal to 3 halves. If you go and grab a calculator and dump it in there, that's what you're going to get, 3 halves. All right, let's do another problem with radicals. It seems to be one of the things that trip people up. What if you have a logarithm, a base 4 logarithm, simply of the square root, whoops, wrote down the wrong number in here, square root of 2. That's what you're taking the logarithm of. You take the base to the power of something that this logarithm is going to give you back is equal to the square root of 2. But now you know that the square root, you need to write it as an exponent. 2 to the 1 halves, 1 half like this. Now, this base is a 4 and this base is a 2. They're not quite the same. So I, in order to figure this out, I really need to change this 4, write it as 2 squared to the power of x. All I did was take the 4 and make it 2 squared because I want to have the same uh, um, uh, base on both sides. Now I have an exponent raised to an exponent. So really this is 2 to the power of 2 times x because 2, two times x there and you get 2 to the 1 half. Now what do I have? Same base on both sides of the equal sign. So because of that, I can go over here and say that 2x, this exponent, is equal to 1 half. Now I know a lot of you can do this in your head, but if you can't, this is what you do. You say you want to divide by 2. So you have 1 half on the right hand side divided by 2, because I'm dividing by 2 to get x by itself, but really 2 is really 2 over 1. So I'm going to take this fraction division and change it to multiplication. This fraction division becomes multiplication. I take the denominator, flip it over, so I have 1 half, and then you have x as 1 fourth. All right? And, well, you know, I circled this, but really what I want you to write is that the logarithm, the base 4 logarithm of the square root of 2, whoops, I can write 2 correctly, is 1 fourth. Base 4 logarithm of the square root of 2 is equal to 1 fourth. And you should check this out. I mean, if you go back over here and put it into this guy here, the fourth root of this guy, when you calculate it, uh, is going to give you the square root of 2. Go ahead and do a factor tree and you'll see that that's the case. Or another way to do it is to just go through here and you can plug in the 1 fourth here and then 1 fourth times 2 is going to give you 1 half which is exactly what you have on the right hand side. So there's lots of different ways to verify what we're getting. But never ever ever forget that these logarithms are returning back to you exponents because it's the opposite. It's the backwards function of an exponential function. That's what it is. Last problem, uh, just to get a little practice, what if you have the logarithm, it's a base 7 logarithm, of the following thing, 49, but it's the cube root of 49. How do we calculate this? All right, well, what you want to do is you want to say 7 to the power of something that this logarithm is going to return back to you is going to be equal to the cube root of 49. But you know that these cube roots can always be written as exponents, so you always want to do that. 49 to the 1 third power because it's a cube root. And you know that you have a 7 as a base, 49 rings a bell with 7, so I know that I can write this 49 as 7 times 7, 7 squared, again raised to the 1 third power. But then I have a power raised to a power, so what I'm going to have, 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. Whoops, let me write the 7 first. It's going to be 2 thirds when you multiply these guys together. So now I have the same base, and I can equate the exponents. x is 2 thirds. And so what you want to say is logarithm base 7 of the cube root of 49 is equal to 2 thirds. And this is the final answer. All right, this is really important stuff, you know, because what happens a lot of times is we introduce the concept of a logarithm, we teach you what it is, we teach you kind of why we use it, 
And then if you don't master these kind of essential core concepts of logarithms, then when you try to do any kind of problem later on down the road, like in calculus, this is used extensively, and you don't really know what a logarithm is or how to manipulate it, then you get stuck and you start making silly mistakes because you don't really know what it is. Never, ever, ever forget, logarithms give you back, they calculate for you an exponent. They're giving you the exponent back. The exponent required to get this number when you take the base raised to that exponent to give you that number. And then the second thing is never forget logarithms are just the inverse function of exponentials. We're gonna use that extensively going forward. Follow me on to the next lesson after you can solve all of these yourself. We'll get some more practice with simplifying these logarithms.